Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi. In this lecture we begin Chapter 5. In particular I want to consider three linear autonomous ordinary differential equations that we analyze completely. And these three examples illustrate the scope of the types of things that can happen. And after that, I want to look over the different examples, collect together some common features, and introduce some terminology. So remember how we ended up the last chapter. We talked about solving in general this equation, x dot equals ax. And in this chapter, I'm going to consider x being two-dimensional. And the reason for that is I like to have examples where I can do all the calculations explicitly by hand without getting bogged down in a lot of algebra, and we can do this. You're going to need to look back at the appendix, uh, appendix A, where and revise how you compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors of two by two matrices, as well as the inverse. So remember we have these five steps. We compute the eigenvalues of A. We compute the eigenvectors of A once we have the eigenvalues. Now, are we always going to be able to compute real eigenvectors? That's an issue that's coming up. Are we going to have enough eigenvectors? But once we have these eigenvectors, we want to form the transformation matrix T. In T, the columns will be the eigenvectors, or in the complex case, be a little more involved. And then we compute lambda, which is t inverse at. Now that should be one of the three canonical forms that I talked about at the end of the last lecture. And then once we've done that, we can compute e to the at. All right. So here's our first example. x1 dot x2 dot is the matrix 2, 1, 1, 2. All right, so that's what we focus on. That's A. We want to compute the eigenvalues. That's pretty standard. And we get two real eigenvalues, 3 and 1. Okay? And then for each eigenvalue, we compute the eigenvector. We know there will be two linearly independent eigenvectors because the eigenvalues are distinct. Okay? So the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 3 is 1, 1. And the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 1 And then what do we do? We make the matrix T, that's step 3, whose columns are the eigenvectors. Now I've chosen 1 minus 1 to be the first column and 1, 1 the second. It doesn't matter which you choose, but it will have a, an influence on the form of the eigenvalues where they appear in the diagonal, for the diagonal matrix. Now we compute T inverse, and there's a handy formula for that that you can re remember. You'll use it a lot in this course, and always check it. Multiply T by T inverse and get the identity. So. Once we have done that, we form T inverse AT. Now that should be diagonal, and it is with the eigenvalues down the diagonal, and 1, 3 corresponding to the order in which I put the eigenvectors in T. So in these eigencoordinates, this is what the system looks like. And you can solve that. You expected to be able to solve it. U1 dot is is U1 naught e to the t, and U2 dot U2 of t is U2 naught e to the 3t. So the origin is unstable. Everything moves away at an exponential rate, in fact. Now if we want to compute e to the a t, and we can easily 
see what that is. And we see also that in the original coordinates, which is what e to the at is in, we still get exponentially growing solutions. So the origin is still unstable. And that's a general fact because the, the transformation between the eigen coordinates and the original coordinates, the coordinates in which this system was presented to us, is a differentiable, it's a linear and invertible coordinate system. And that does not change stability. That's something that needs to be checked, but it is true. And the coordinate change doesn't depend upon time. So, if we want to draw the phase portrait for this system, it looks something like this. The origin is the only equilibrium point or fixed point, and trajectories are just lines that move away from the origin at an exponential rate. So the eigenvalues are both real. There's no imaginary part and they're real and positive. We refer to an equilibrium point that's unstable in this way with the eigenvalues, the re real parts positive as a source, and we'll come back to that later on. This terminology. Okay, I will quit there for the moment, and I will come back next time and do another example. So, see you next time. Bye.